maids, or pairs, gardeners, babysitters, and other domestic workers to the wealthy. What's the weirdest thing you've seen rich people do behind closed doors? Helped my mother-in-law who was a maid once with a very large mansion in NC. Beautiful house. Amazing architecture. They traveled the world all the time. The kitchen had old old appliances from the 70s. The wife's bathroom had a broken toilet seat that was duct taped together. The wife did not rewear her underwear. We were not to go in the basement. I peeked down there. There were clothes 3 foot deep in the basement where she took off her clothes and just threw them down there. Thousands of pairs of underwear. Very weird people. That's when you know you've made it. Never ray wear undies. Wasn't really behind closed doors or anything but I delivered furniture to a very rich person's mega house once only to discover. As we were going from room to room. A few rooms were completely bare and empty. I didn't really register it at first because I figured we would be putting furniture in there with the load we were delivering but that didn't happen and I mentioned to a co-worker how the one room was bigger than my living room and completely bare and he said maybe they're getting stuff during another round and the guy heard and said now nah, that room is staying empty. I have no use for it. Same with the others too. I couldn't really wrap my head around a lot of things after that. First off to be rich enough to afford a house like that. Then on top of that, purposefully have parts of your house go completely unused because you don't care about them. Like, why even buy a house that big then? Why overdo it and leave some of it unused? Why not just buy what you need and use it all? Rich people are weird. I nannied for a New York City power couple in 2014. Both were corporate lawyers for national banks. The husband owned more socks than I had ever seen at one time in my life. Drawers upon drawers of them. All navy blue, black, and grey. One can never have enough socks. I know a lady who's discreetly rich. One of those that unless you knew the more expensive but quiet brands, you wouldn't be able to place her. She would wear designer jewelry sets to the gym. Anyway, her quirk was she liked Costa coffee, so she'd get one one day, drink half of it, let it cool and then put the rest of it in the fridge, and reheat and drink the other half the next day. When she told us that she does this, and we asked her why, she laughed and said, I'm just frugal. That's probably why she's so wealthy. I used to be a live in nanny for the CEO of a major German investment bank in Berlin. They were a lovely couple with a sweet baby girl, and they made me feel like part of the family from day one. They paid me well, had a separate car for me and weren't concerned by what I did in my spare time. They were very generous, lovely people. My only gripe is that they had strange eating habits some days they would have 3 enormous meals, and other days they would forget to eat all day. I was often too shy to say that I was hungry. I am like this. I have food issues due to my childhood. Some days I am fine and eat normal meals and others I don't eat at all because the thought of food makes me sick. My sister is a nanny for an NBA player and his wife. The wife called my sister at 9pm to come to their house for an urgent matter. When my sister gets to their house, the wife tells her take the trash out. That's it. My sister drove an hour round trip to take out the trash. She has so many ridiculous stories about this family, but that one is my go to. I hope they pay her commensurately. My friend works for a tax lawyer for the obscenely wealthy. Their firm is one of those go-to places when you want to take advantage of tax havens. Think Panama Luxembourg. He tells me he one of their clients had an issue and called the people he always turns to for help. His lawyers. The problem? He bought a new jet and only just realized its entertainment system doesn't have a Blu-ray player. This was 5 years ago. Find someone that can fix it. Today. He had lawyers at three different firms searching for a solution that afternoon, all billed him for it of course. Gosh, where to start? The wife was driving through the home improvement part of the city and saw a sale on bathtubs, so she popped in and bought three. As she was leaving, she saw another tub she liked and simply had to get that one too. She wasn't renovating a house at the time. They refused to throw away food. Used by and best before dates are completely ignored. To the point where I found a tin of seafood marinara which was 15 years out of date. They have a holiday home in the South Pacific and have a housekeeper clean it 3 times a week yet they only visit 3-4 times a year. When they're not visiting, no one lives there. When the family go out for dinner, the father will happily pay for the expensive meals but not the drinks. 
The kids, who are all teens or older, have to pay him back for the drinks and he will send reminder messages about the amount. Yet when any of the kids offer to pay for the meal, he won't accept. The wife is a hoarder and will often take way more samples than any normal person. She always makes sure to take all the shampoo soap etc from hotel rooms and if she passes the housekeeping trolley, will grab as many as she can from there too. Yet she never uses them. They have a whole bathroom cupboard dedicated to samples. Sounds like recently becoming rich with a mix of growing up poor and hoarding tendencies. I was a babysitter for rich people once. Their silverware was constantly filthy and caked in what resembled peanut butter and regret. Their children were pleasant, but refused to brush their teeth more often than their hygiene impaired parents until I told them gross stories about gingivitis. The mom had a small buddhist altar in the living room, but was also extremely vocal about her christianity, would repeat the experience. It was mostly getting paid to help with homework and watch Voltron and pillow forts. I once assisted a country manager of a big MLM company. He wanted me to book him a rental car until he gets his own car. He got so stressed out that the rental car can't accommodate him, it was last minute. His place was less than 5 minutes away from his work, if you walk. MLMs almost always make a huge deal out of the luxury cars, usually the cheapest ones of the flashy brands you can find. Their top performers supposedly own, because that helps lure in the exact type of impulsive, insecure people they target. I've only babysat one time and it was for a friend of my grandparents. All I really had to do was hang out with their 8 year old grandson for a night. Overall it was a pretty cool night. All we did was play 2k and Madden all night so it wasn't bad. But anyway, this family wasn't like billionaire wealthy, but wealthy enough to where they left me an envelope with $500 in it and told me whatever I don't spend on food, I can keep. Wealthy enough to have sped off in a Maserati for the dinner they were at. Wealthy enough to have a pool, jacuzzi, a nice barbecue built into the backyard out back. You get the idea. They were just an old couple with some money, and they were taking their grandson's parents out to dinner one particular night. Leave me with $500. So I think to myself, I might as well splurge like 30 or 40 bucks on a meal for two and pocket the rest. I was like 17 or 18 at the time so I can't say it was a negligible amount of money. But anyway, I take the kid outside to my car across the street, which, at the time, was my older brother's 2005 Toyota Corolla. He gets in, takes a look around, and goes where's the button that moves the roof back sorry kid, no convertible here. He tells me that his parents only have convertible cars and that he's only been in one other car that isn't a convertible, and that he isn't my friend anymore. I thought that was pretty weird. Throughout the night, he did also make some interesting rich kid comments, such as asking if we could go to a restaurant that had steak on the menu. He revealed an interesting bit about his parents, saying that they keep talking about bringing him a sister when the time is right. Apparently the kid asked the dad when the right time was and he said when mommy stops being afraid. I then learned that the kid's mom and dad divorced about a year later. Felt bad. He was a cool kid. Didn't really have that crappy spoiled vibe. More like an innocent, curious, steered wrong by his parents vibe. That was a roller coaster of emotions for me. Wow. By the end I was glad they got divorced though. When mommy stops being afraid is a freaking weird thing to say to your kid. The most bizarre was this newly rich young family in Vienna. The bedtime routine for the kids, aged 3 and 7, included basically a spa treatment for both. I haven't seen that amount of products in a child's bathroom, they each had their own, in my life. The poor 7 year old girl had next to no hair on her head but I was required to slather her in the most expensive adult shampoo, conditioner, hair mask hair oil, and some other things I didn't recognize. Every night, they only had one tiny box of toys and time spent playing was set up for 30 minutes after they brushed their teeth. Dinner was normally a bland fish fillet and a ton of salad. Not a grain of sugar anywhere in the house. Hot cocoa was made with skim milk and pure high quality cocoa. No sweetness to it whatsoever, it tasted awful. They had time to explain everything to me the first time I was there and I received an inch thick file with lists and procedures to follow. What they didn't mention was that the older girl was still wearing diapers at night. It made for a very awkward conversation with the child and I only hope I was sensitive enough to not cause her any future trauma. 
Very, very weird. Growing up my mother would clean houses for wealthy individuals. There was an elderly widowed woman with large all white poodles. She insisted that my mother clean them with bleach. She would provide 2 gallons of bleach each week. My mother never did bleach them. She just poured out the bleach in the tub. As the owner of a white poodle, that's a nightmare thing to do to a dog. Bleach is not good for living animals. I was a nanny for an affluent family. They had a beautiful home and nice vehicles and the kids all had lots of toys and new clothes but while doing laundry one day I had to take a load of mom's cloths out of the dryer and every single pair of her panties had multiple holes in them. Not like nor holes lol but worn out most tattered panties I've ever seen holes. Got curious and looked in her undergarment drawer and this was par for the course and not just period panties. She was like a major high up in a huge company and her panties looked worse than I would imagine a homeless person wearing. I just, I'm concerned about the term nor holes. I grew up in a middle class family living in of the richest parts of the country. A lot of my friends had incredibly rich parents. What I remember most of all was how weird some of them can be with money. They'd spent big money on some things then turn around to be incredibly frugal on something else. I knew people that wouldn't think twice about dropping 300 euros k on a new car or putting in a sauna and swimming pool in their basement but who wouldn't allow us more than half a bag of chips between the three of us. You can't show off a bag of chips to the neighbors. The majority of my customers I do work for are incredibly wealthy. Their houses exterior and yard is immaculate except for the parts that can't be seen from the street. Those are overgrown mildewy messes. The insides get cleaned for the holidays and that's it. Worked for a beverage distribution place in a very ritzy resort area for a while. Guy's assistant shows up and says he needs a pallet of Evian for his boss's house. No problem. We load it on the truck and drive it up to his house. After unloading we ask him where he wants it and he leads us into the garage and asks if we can help unload it. So we start down sticking and carry cases of this crap into what I thought would be the kitchen or pantry. Nope. Straight through the house to the back deck. He was filling his hot tub with Evian. I regularly babysat a quietly wealthy widow's two kids, seriously sweet little kids, hanging out with them was always fun, they even liked sharing their newest toys with you. I don't think anyone in our rather small town realized how loaded she was. When I babysat, it was because she was helicoptering off to the capital 30kms away for a party date slash 5 star function in a new designer gown, shoes, purse, the works. She paid really well, and always offered me trinkets like gold bracelets that I still couldn't afford 20 years later. I think in part, it was because I never mentioned what she got up to. To anyone, even my mother who was friends with her. The family I worked for had a nanny. Youngest daughter forced her nanny to push her around the entire property while she just emitted a high C note. The property was hundreds of acres and they were at it for quite a while. The breadwinner is the husband. Can't say what he does as I believe he wouldn't like that. Either way he was a menace to the trees. Would need work breaks so he'd grab a pole saw and go to town on random trees. Then he'd get bored and tell me to clear the piles he made and pretty the trees back up. This was also their 365 acre weekend home complete with damn generated power that took them off grid. They had a mansion in the big city. Cottage in cottage country. And this property in farm country. The C note move is wild didn't work for them, but went to school with their son. The daughter was 19 and had gotten married, so the couple decided to have a test child that was a small monkey. That was already pretty weird, but then I learned that they also had a previous monkey before that. It had been playing in the laundry while the maid was loading clothes in the washer. Poor thing died. Makes me wonder why they didn't call the test child thing off after the first one died. Test monkey round 1. Failed. I dated a very wealthy man. Nothing was out of reach for him, and he wasn't used to being told no for any reason. I broke up with him the day he pulled a gun out on his driver because the guy refuses to part with his beanie on a cold day. My ex wanted the beanie and could not understand why he could not just take it. Freaking weird dude. What a psychopath. My dad is an electrician and has worked in some very rich houses. He did a job in one where the couple only drank very posh fresh coffee. Fair enough. Who wouldn't? 
but they had a cleaner who was permitted one cup of coffee each day, but not their coffee. She had her own separate coffee, but it wasn't even a decent, if cheaper, brand. It was the cheapest possible sort to buy, as the smart press instant or something. If a person comes to my flat, whether they are a friend or the plumber, they are a guest and they will drink whatever tea or coffee I drink because I see them as equals. My dad has told me that some of the stingiest people he knows are also the wealthiest. These are the worst kinds of people. It's like having someone over for dinner and giving them less or worse food. Baby sat a few times for a friend of my lawyer uncle. She was insanely wealthy widow who lost her husband to a freak helicopter accident. She would sleep with her then 10 year old son both naked in the same bed and then would walk around the house the next morning in the buff. I understand them needing time to grieve and even occasionally sharing a bed. However the whole naked thing threw me off and I only did it a few weekends. The kid was great and loved me but was a little too touchy and cuddly. No way I was going to be around his naked. It was bit away from my house and she would come home late so I would sleep in their guest house. She would sleep with her then 10 year old son both naked in the same bed. Ah. Once when I was a nanny, I was house sitting while the family was out of the country. The refrigerator in my apartment broke, so I packed up some perishables and brought them to the family's house to store them until the landlord could fix it. When I brought my groceries back to my place, I realized I had accidentally grabbed something that wasn't mine from the cheese drawer. It was a gallon Ziploc bag. Inside that was a smaller Ziploc bag. Inside that was a bundle of wax paper. Inside that was a bundle of plastic wrap. Inside that was another bundle of plastic wrap. Inside that was a bundle of tin foil. Seven layers deep, I found an old lump of fruitcake. I was a live and groundskeeper for a wealthy eccentric for a while. He had three cars from old movies in his garage. One was from a Bond film. They were covered in layers of dust and trash. One of them was a convertible that had the top caved in by trash, or some cars just totally neglected and forgotten. He also had a favorite dog kept frozen in a meat cooler, surrounded by decade old frozen food items. I know about this stuff because the garage is where my equipment was. I only saw inside the proper house once. I lived in the keeper's housing. It was full of all this crystal, pewter, and silver tableware and decorative stuff. Easily hundreds of thousands of dollars in items just laying around in piles. Like a freaking pirate movie. He was rarely there anyway. Once every three months he would swing in to pay bills and take care of other crap. Then go back to France where he lived with his wife. A lesser man than I could have made out like a bandit just taking things here and there. The guy wouldn't have even noticed. I just did my job though. Even improved his property, because the guy before me was a lazy stoner. I was a stoner too, but I was the busybody kind. Former nanny for a very wealthy Silicon Valley family. The mom had recently married her new husband when I was hired. Husband was an older, wealthy lawyer and wife was in tech consulting. They were always really kind to me and the kids were good despite having insane privilege. Honestly the only weird thing was that the parents were addicted to 5 hour energy and coke zero. I assume because they were total workaholics and needed the caffeine. I'd get texts at random hours just begging me to bring over coke zero and 5 hour energy. I'd purchase cases at a time and it would all be gone by the end of the week. The kids didn't touch the stuff. They made sure of it, so I know it was pretty much all the mom and stepdad. I was a nanny for a rich family in Vegas. The amount of food they wasted was crazy. One instance I can remember is the woman buying monster energy drinks for her nephew who only visited her house maybe twice a year. The garage was stocked with cases of the stuff for the kid. When it went bad, they threw it out and bought more. Oh, there was also the time they had me run around and buy $25 gift certificates for their annual company Christmas party from 25 different places in Las Vegas. Two days before Christmas. That was fun. Not any of the things on list. Not behind closed doors. Former flooring salesman here. Rather wealthy housewife asked me to bring tile samples for her soon to be renovated open concept kitchen. Very proper housewife apologized profusely for her husband and son watching pee. Naked in the living room. Whole house stank of weed. Husband and son had to hear us. Neither even looked. You. 
I work at a ski school office at a fancy ski resort in Colorado. I've had guests come in and get a private instructor just for them for 3 weeks straight at a grand a day and then throw the biggest hissy fit when their credit card declines a 20k charge. Trying to explain that their card company might think it's fraud and they lose their minds. I have a 200k limit it shouldn't decline. To be honest I kinda sympathize a little. It's so embarrassing to see your credit card decline when you know what the limit is. I won't go into any detail but I come from a affluent middle class family and if you're paying for something in front of family and friends and your card is declined. Fraud checks usually. It's not giving you a good image in front of other people. I'm an assistant to a rich guy. I help him run his business. Most of the ones I know are very entitled. They don't understand no. I have no idea how some of these people got rich. I watched my boss have a full blown temper tantrum because a customer called him 40 minutes before he was leaving on vacation. Full blown meltdown. This guy barely does anything and goes on vacation at least once a month. Screws over his customers on a regular basis. We ordered a burger one day and they used a sea same sea bun. He does not like sea same seed so he threw the burger at the cook and basically lost his crap. Always complains about how crappy his life is, even though he buys anything and goes anywhere he wants. It's hard to explain until you see it, but money and greed really screws people up. Once he gets back from summering in LA, I am looking for something new as I just don't care anymore. During the summer while I was on vacation from college, I helped my mom at her first landscaping greenhouse job. We went to this particular lady's house in the rich part of town. Big antebellum home. She was a realtor and all that jazz. We called her dragon lady because her. Uh, she looked like a wrinkly old dragon and b. She hoarded the most ridiculous jewelry and always wore it. Even in her pajamas. We were taking a job to fix up. Replace nice shrubs and flowers that she was just tired of her backyard. She was a terrible excuse of a human. Mean spirited. Snide comments. The works. But she had an inordinate amount of fresh young men always in and out of her house. Like the entire time we were there. Quite the variety. And if we ran into one she always introduced them as her cousins and we were like yeah okay sure you old crusty bag. She would flounce around in sheer robes with little to cover anything underneath. The guys followed her around the house like they were on a leash. It was like she wanted us to see her because she was always in her sunroom being doted on by her cousins. Putting lotion on her reptilian skin. Bringing her drinks. Food, etc. Then when she was done with them a slick nice Mercedes would pick them up. We only witnessed the car a couple times but man she was weird. And gross. She's probably a fossil by now I guess. She was a relic then and that was only like 7 years ago. I can't think of anything particularly scandalous. But there seemed to be a really disproportionate number of uncomfortably close relationships between meek. Grown sons who still lived at home and their domineering mothers. I was a nanny for a really wealthy family. Their public face was polished and put together. My second day on the job, I noticed that there were really intricate alarms and lock systems on each of the kids bedroom doors. It turns out the dad was a registered sex offender. The alarm systems would turn on and lock the kids doors at 9.30pm. The mom had to use a special code to open them if the kids needed her during the night. They turned out to be a really fricked up family. So I was only a nanny for a year. What the frick? Why would you stay with someone you need to keep locked away from your children? Imagine having to explain that to the kids when they get older. Why they had to grow up locked up. When you have the opportunity to be in people's homes, behind the scenes or before they have been cleaned, you learn things about them. If you have a housekeeper, he or she will see all your stuff. They will pretend they don't, or that seeing it or dealing with it is totally usual. Sometimes, it's, not, sometimes people are fricked up and you get to see what their friends and family don't see. People had a spa bath that had actual physical and visible mushrooms growing from the grouting. About 15 cms tall. Fascinating. Had worked around drug paraphernalia, guns, sex toys, unflushed toilets and exotic pets that were just hanging out. I've cleaned up around leopard skins, coral, taxidermy eagles. Shark's jaws, tortoise and turtle shells and a stuffed bear which is totally freaking weird as I live in NZ. 
A couple who had taken out the innards from their many smoke alarms and installed hidden cameras in them thorough out the house. The one thing that irks me to this day, is being yelled at by crazy p high guy in his undies rare his cacti. They sat in full sun. Their house is beachfront. He was pee the cheap cacti in plastic pots were not thriving and was convinced it was because I wasn't watering them enough. Size. Their pot dirt was always sodden. Heck, can't win em all. The cactus needed better draining soil and to dry out between waterings. Source. I'm cheap cacti owner, but mine are flourishing. Frick you rich guy. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.